On July 2, 1955, in New York, it was a beautiful sunny day. Pan American Flight 914 was preparing to fly from New York to Miami, Florida. The plane, carrying 57 passengers and four crew members, took off from New York. It took them three hours to reach their destination. Air traffic controllers in Florida were waiting for the flight from New York. But the flight did not arrive, even when it was supposed to. As hours passed, the plane did not arrive, and officials at the Miami control tower received no sign of the aircraft. The plane didn't appear on radar in Florida, and there was no communication with the pilot. Its location remained unknown, leaving authorities unable to locate the aircraft. Of course, the next logical step was to contact the New York control tower. Then the air traffic police arrived at the New York control tower but they received a strange reply. Flight 914 had taken off on time from there, but they had lost radio contact with the pilot. Then, as the plane never arrived in Florida, authorities confirmed the situation. Pan American Flight 914 took off from New York and was missing. Then the investigation began, but no significant evidence was found. It was at this point that a crucial detail caught their attention. Half of the flight route from New York to Florida traverses over the sea. When they found no evidence, they confirmed the plane had crashed into the sea during its journey, resulting in the loss of all passengers and crew members. However, there were significant inconsistencies in the investigation's conclusion. After the plane went missing, Extensive search operations were conducted on both land and sea by multiple rescue teams. Coast guards were also instructed to scan the sea waters. Despite the extensive search efforts, they were unable to find any trace of the crashed plane, or rather, the plane they believed had crashed. The absence of debris raised questions about the fate of the plane. If it did indeed crash, why was there no evidence? Alternatively, if the plane hadn't crashed, where could it have vanished to? This mystery marks the beginning of our story. Welcome back to Incredible Stories. As time passed, the disappearance of the plane gradually faded from public attention, yet the lack of evidence persisted. Years passed, and on September 2, 1992, in Venezuela, 37 years had elapsed since the incident. The airport in Venezuela, situated in South America, bustled with its usual activity. Juan de la Corte, the air traffic controller, was engrossed in his busy work as usual. Suddenly, he noticed something unusual. A plane had appeared on the radar. He couldn't figure out which plane it was because there were no scheduled arrivals at that airport at that time. Despite knowing all the flight schedules for the day, he double-checked them again. That's when he realized it. This was an emergency landing. Airplanes make emergency landings at nearby airports when there are technical problems. However, despite this knowledge, a sense of fear crept into him. He observed the plane approaching the airport on radar and then through binoculars. Initially, it appeared to be a normal plane but as it drew nearer, its mysterious nature became increasingly apparent. He realized that it was a very old plane as he observed its distinctive features. Finally, the plane came into clear view. They were greatly surprised when they saw the appearance of the plane. The aircraft itself was not very old, although its design seemed outdated. They had the impression of a vehicle from another world. They couldn't comprehend what was happening, unsure of what to do next. Suddenly, the captain of the plane connected with the airport radio and inquired, Where are we? The officials responded and then they requested the details of the plane. The pilot informed them that it was a pan-American flight from New York to Florida. However, what the pilot said next had a significant impact on the officers. The pilot told them, this plane was supposed to land on 2nd July, 1985. Fear gripped the officers upon hearing this revelation. They remained silent, not daring to respond to the pilot.
Instead, they began asking if there had been any accidents involving the plane or if it had landed elsewhere. But the pilot remained silent, which only added to the official's confusion. Shortly afterward, the plane began its descent to land, intensifying the situation. After the plane landed, the officers confronted the pilot, saying, I believe you're aware. You've landed in September 1992. Upon hearing this, the pilot started to become visibly upset. The officers could hear the pilot's voices stuttering with fear. Following that, security guards were sent by the officials to disembark the passengers. However, when the security guards approached the plane, the pilots did something strange. The pilot forbade the passengers from getting off the plane. The officials were puzzled by the situation. However, soon the pilot did something that no one expected. He began to initiate the plane's takeoff, a highly risky maneuver. Despite receiving numerous radio calls from officials urging him to stop, the pilot remained steadfast in his decision. That's how the plane took off. Within seconds, they vanished from the radar. Despite several search efforts, no results were found. Once again, Pan American Flight 914 disappeared without a trace. It was then that they suddenly remembered another detail that caught the officer's attention. As they looked through the binoculars, they clearly saw the plane and its passengers through the windows. According to the information provided by the pilot of that plane, when they calculated the age of the plane and the passengers, none of them seemed to have aged. What really happened to that plane? Why did neither the plane nor its occupants seem to have aged? It remains an unsolved mystery in American history.